Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. How are you? Hello. Oh, I'm quite well, Stevie. And how do you do? I do well. I do well. I'm over the COVID, so it's quite nice. Huzzah! But yes, I don't feel sick anymore, so it's just quite nice. It's so great to be post-COVID, is it not? It is. Have you? Have you had it? I don't recall if you've had it. I had it over Christmas. I had COVID for Christmas. Oh, and yes, I. you did. You did. Oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot. No, it was lovely. Nothing like a COVID Christmas, don't you know? Yes. A lovely COVID Christmas, alone with a plug-in Christmas tree, watching Mystery Science Theater 3000. You certainly had fun. I had a wonderful time. I ate lots of peanut butter. And I hope you're having a wonderful time out there, <laughs> dear listeners. Yeah, that's right. I call it a segue. You're listening to Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Hosted by Stevie Manz and myself, and today is Stardate 41874.1. And we're talking about Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Season 1, Episode 9, the penultimate episode of the season. And what an episode it was. Oh my god. I never would have seen this. I would have expected this to be a finale kind of episode. Yes, indeed. It had finale vibes, doesn't it? Yeah. You, we I, had I mean, two departures. We had two crew departures slash yeah. exits, shall we say? Yeah. What What are you going to do with the next? Thing? I don't know. How are they going to end it? The next it? episode is going to be like, hey, we go home, have some time off. I don't know. Pike grows his beard. Anyway, before we get into the episode, we got to handle a little business. Yes. Join us on patreon.com forward slash set phases for much, much fun and goody goodness with Aki and myself. Aki, we need to do a Zoom hang. When should we do that? End of. End of July? Uh, before the very end of July when I go back on tour. But yes, yeah, sometime during July. And we will, we will plan for the end of July to do a Zoom hang with our patrons, our Patreons. And you can only do that, of course, by going to patreon.com forward slash set phasers and becoming a patron of ours. And we will also give you behind the scenes access to all things Star Trek that we have. You can have early access to the audio episodes as they go up onto the publishing platforms before they go to the general public. Don't. And yes. yes, and of course, access to these video episodes live, which no one else ever gets. So you get to see Who doesn't all of want the this? magic. Who doesn't want this? And you get to see Aki. I'm wearing pre- a Star Trek t-shirt. Oh, yes, you no are. No bow tie. Look at that. No bow tie. You're practically undressed. So patreon.com forward slash set phasers to join us for that. Yes, good Aki. Very nice t-shirt. Okay, are we done? Okay, yes, all right, done showing my t-shirt. Yes, well, without further ado, oof, let's run down this episode, All Those Who Wander. It's time to run it down. Can you run it down for me? What just happened? Can you run it down for me? Oh, I'd be only too delighted. We begin with Uhura's log. We've come to the end of her rotation here on the Enterprise. As we all know, she's not hugely into Starfleet. She joined up just to run away from the death of her parents. Didn't know what to do. She's good at languages. She just fall in. She just failed up because she's the greatest communicator of all time or whatever. She's like, I don't know if I'm meant to be here. So anyway, last rotation, last mission. Then we go home. Can't wait to see my grandma. She's still searching for purpose. And the Enterprise is on a mission to deliver Vidium power cells to Deep Space K7. So there's a party at Park. At Party at Park. Par- There's a party at Pike, and he's doing what Pike does. He's cooking up a storm, and everyone's there, and it's just a big farewell for the the ensigns and all that business. And seeing Hura show up, linger in the background, number one gives Pike a signal. Pike addresses the assembled crew. Congratulations to Cadet Uhura and Chia for completing their training rotations, and Ensign Duke, front and center. 
and they promote Ensign Duke to Lieutenant. He's now Lieutenant Duke. Seeing Uhura keeping her distance from the gathering, Ortegas comes over and is like, hey, what's up, man? You gonna hang out here in the back? And Uhura's like, oh, man, I really hate goodbyes. And Pike overhears this and he approaches. He's like, so you haven't decided to stay yet? Why not? There will always be a place for you here on the Enterprise, he says. And just as he says that, Spock calls to Pike with news of a priority one mission from Starfleet. And number one, Una is surprised because they are already on a priority one mission. The the power cells, presumably. Pike asks where La'an is. Una tells him La'an is taking personal health time. Pike's like, we'll fill her in later. Get me science and medical. Science and medical. I've always wanted to say that to someone. Science and medical. I will just be like, give me science, medical, billings, and just label departments when I'm people hmm. because I'm that important or whatever get me humanities i can't think of department names i'll think of it later all right so we flash forward a couple it's later the 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 various science and medical i.e spock and Mbanga are there as well as una and pike is doing dishes and they're talking and lon rise from her appointment with a dr sanchez whom i don't think we've met but who's mentioned pointedly, thinks thoughts for thinking, calls them a head shrinker. Number one is really happy that Lon is making use of the ship's counselor. Pike offers her some food, which she says she's like, it's cool, I don't need to eat. And then Una's like, you have to try the omelet and the bacon. And Mbanga, who's been eating the whole time and never ceases to eat in this scene, says, you must also try the waffle. So I guess mm-hmm. it was a breakfast party they were having for the or brunch, maybe? maybe I don't know. Maybe like yeah. a brunch farewell party for the people. An Evite from Captain Pike. So, Spock explains there was a distress call sent from the USS Peregrine before it lost contact. And Pike can't Spock. The apron tells him to finish the dishes. And Pike explains the message took two days to reach Starfleet and then another two to get to the Enterprise. So it's been four days. La'an, while being shocked at the deliciousness of Pike's cooking, and I note here again that Mbanga never stops eating in this scene, it's quite great, mentions the Peregrine had been making an unscheduled landing at Valio Beta 5, which is an L-class planet, and La'an muses that the ship could have been destroyed on con- on impact. But Spock believes that the planet's interference is what's blocking the signal. Signal may still be going because the planet is known as a dead zone. No comms or transport are possible in its atmosphere. On notes that the Peregrine is a uh, somber, 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 it's a somber class ship. I may have misspelled the class of ship that is essentially a Vega Surgeon one who's super fast. They're made from Constitution class parts, but apparently for like faster zipping around. Pike's orders are to investigate the situation, save the crew, and if possible, save the ship. So maybe these somber class ships are important for something. These fast little fast movers. Uh, Laon notes, hey, we got these power cells and they don't they they lose power on transport. And if we wait to do the Peregrine mission, then they'll be useless by the time they get to DSK-7. And so she suggests, hey, okay, what we'll do is we'll go by Valio Beta 5. We'll drop a landing party off to figure things out. Enterprise continue on to D-Space K-7. Come on back. Una is concerned about the risk. Pike has faith in the crew and, in fact, will oversee this away mission personally. He views it as one last mission with all the cadets before they go. Pile all the kids into the station wagon, which confuses Spock. Anyway, they flash forward. The away team lands. Enterprise continues on. There are geothermal conditions on the planet that mean that they can't land right where the Peregrine is. And there's a big ice storm coming, so Spike's like, Spike, Spike. I did it already. Spock is like, we gotta move fast. And he's got his team, which is Lieutenant Kirk is back, Mr. Mustache, formerly Ensign, now Lieutenant Duke, Nurse Chapel, and Ensign's Chia, uh, Cadets Chia and Uhura. Oh, and Hammer. Hammer's there. The engineer. Hammer. Spock calls Duke an Ensign by accident. And apparently Kirk reminds him that there's like a drinking game in Starfleet that uh, he has to buy him a drink for doing that. And Chapel says it's tradition. And Spock's like, God, are there any end to like the drinking games among you humans? And Kirk's like, absolutely not. Meanwhile, Pike is with La'an and Mbenga and they're scanning the ship. And they find out that it landed in a chasm and there are no life signs, but that could be interference. And then La'an comes across a bloodied corpse in the... Okay, so they manage to pry open the airlocks. They see a bunch more blood. Spock's like, hey, bridge controls are off. Everything's been routed to engineering. Hammer's like this plasma in the, the conduits, which means the crew must have used a warped core for emergency power. And Uhura says the reactor's completely crapped and the environmental systems are down to 20%. So Pike's like, hey, 
Hammer, get the power back up. Hammer can do that from engineering. So Spock is going to have to figure out the bridge controls. And Laan will complete a sweep. Oh, Laan completes a sweep from outside with Mbanga. Oh, they found 20 more bodies. Some of them picked apart. Laan posits possibly by local wildlife. So Pike's like, we got to recover these logs. Meanwhile, Kirk and Chapel are outside walking around, talking. And they discover more bodies. Several Paragon crew members, but their bodies have been ripped apart and strewn around in a clearing, sort of ritualistically, reminding us of maybe something we saw earlier in the season. Mm -hmm. But who's saying? Who's saying? I, I guess like the 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 last time on Star Trek: Strange New Worlds gave it away because they did the whole thing where Lon was like, "Everyone, many people have seen the Gorn, but they don't live to tell about it." <laughs> that was my. <laughs> oh, I love your British accent is about accident. as good as my wife's. Right. She sounds like Dick Van Dyke. I know she sounds Hello. Born. Would you like a cup of tea? Would you like a cup of tea? I just know that La Anne says Gorn. 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 The Gorn. Okay. Gorn. The Gorn. The Gorn. Plenty of people have seen the Gorn. Even lived to tell about it, have they? Plenty of people She's have a seen sweet the Gorn. Lady. Few have lived to tell about it. Plenty of people have seen the Gorn love, but few have lived to tell about it. Oh, fuck. In it. Love. Why? Love now. Okay, so where the <laughs> hell was I? Yes, Uhura. Meanwhile, back on the ship, she manages to bring up the ship's logs, audio only. Captain Gavin says the Peregrine found three castaways while they were on an M M class planet. It was a human girl, a humanoid of unknown provenance, and an Orion named Pasco. And they didn't know it at the time, but they soon found out that Pasco was infected with Gorn eggs. The biofilters did not pick them up, did not pick them up. But Pasco knew. And went and set off a plasma grenade in engineering to try and end it. Note to self, my computer <laughs> autocorrected without my not noticing plasma grenade to plasma granted. Anyway, to end it. It's a good thing I know what I'm talking about. Gavin says that the distress call was sent automatically by the ship once the explosion happened in engineering as it was crashing into the planet. But that if she could contact Starfleet now, she would tell them to stay away. Well, it's too late for that, La notes. And Uhura detects two life signs on the ship of a sudden. One is human, and one is unknown. So, Pike tells Hammerdick, hey, figure out the engineering stuff. Get the power back as soon as you can. Pike, Uhura, and La'an go to investigate. They walk through the wrecked corridors, uh, uh, wires coming out of the ceiling, uh, the blood on the floor and, uh, and on the, the windows, and uh, more mangled bodies, their heads going the wrong way for their knees and their legs. And they are confronted when they get to the place where they saw the two life signs by a green-skinned humanoid with some sort of pitchfork stun spear or something uh, he's like ah, ah, and the language they can't it's nothing universal translators not getting it uhura doesn't know what it is but uhura thinks that that humanoid might be protecting someone or something as there were two life signs so when pike and laan lower weapons the the humanoid allows them to enter into the room it had been protecting from and that's where they find the young human girl mentioned in the log meanwhile Spock goes to sick bay, needing supplies for Duke. Lieutenant Duke apparently cut himself, like burned himself in one of the EPS conduits, and uh, he doesn't see the logic in Duke asking him to go for the medical supplies instead of coming to seek treatment himself. But Nurse Chapel is there, and she says, "Oh, that's just because Duke made rank, and now he's trying to act tough. It's like, hey, go get the stuff. I'm going to keep working or whatever." And Spock notes that it is pride, that one of those flawed human emotions, pride. And Chapel's like, oh, yeah, well, I've heard that Vulcans have a, quote, hidden primal. To which Spock is like, yeah, yeah, we got that. But uh, we use logic so that we don't succumb to it because it's very dangerous for us to allow our emotions to come out. Foreshadowing. And Chapel says, of course, it's good to get mad sometimes. Fully not understanding the psychology of Vulcans. But whatever let's see what happens i'm sure it won't be a mess i'm sure it'll be fine working to restore power uhura and hammer are talking and uhura mentions that she'll miss hammer when she leaves and hammer thinks ah it's nonsense oh i only noticed this in the second rewatch hammer says oh that's nonsense people have a tendency to come back around in starfleet <gasps> now i don't want to get ahead of ourselves but i assume everyone who's watching this is not watching it at the same time that they're listening to this episode they all know what happened to hammer at the end do you think possibly Hammer might be saying that he might come back around in Starfleet. Uh, leaving it open. Okay. All right. Anyway, Hammer says... So in we have some news in which there was an interview with Bruce Horak. 
So I can uh, give you some more information on what he might have meant about that. Yes, well, we'll see. Okay, so, Ahura, not sure, says she doesn't have the purpose in life like he does. Hammer has his purpose, which is to fix broken things. And she feels that she's been drifting, and she says, I have trouble making friends. And Hammer's like, you don't even have trouble making friends? You're great at making friends. You just don't want to make friends because you think that by pushing people away, you won't have to deal with the hurt of losing them or being hurt by them. But he tells her, it's worth the hurt. You got to trust me, baby. Just like the lesson we learned in Picard season two. Meanwhile, Chapel and Mbenga examine the castaways. The girl's name is Oriana, and she calls the humanoid Buckley. Uh... Lan enters as, and is like really interrogating. She's like, uh, these medical scans, so what if they're clean? You tell us, Jerry, are you infected with the gorn egg, gorn eggs? And he's like, ah, you knew that there were eggs. How didn't you tell everybody? And does anyone, do you know where the rest of the gorn eggs are? And tell us, Jerry, no. and I'm like, because she has a history with the gorn. And uh, Benga shuts her down. And he's like, hey, stop interrogating my daughter. Oops, my patient. Ah, oh, I got emotional there. And he tells Lan, go be useful elsewhere. Meanwhile, Pike in some sort of uh, command area has conducted a scan of the ship and he's like, it's clean. It's just us and the, the two castaways and no Gorn, I don't think. Uh, Laon enters and says that, hey, listen, check this out. See, Oriana was, was logged as missing two years ago. She believes these three castaways are survivors from a Gorn bleeding bleed, bleed, bleeding from a Gorn breeding planet. And she says, Gorn harvest their young sporadically. So whatever came out of this girl or whatever was probably alone but they could still be in a dangerous shape and pike's like "Ooh, calmed her down but we can run security sweeps we've got to warn the crew immediately manga enters as pike leaves and he apologizes for his outburst he's like hey this whole thing about sopranos singing and you feel the emotions and blah 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 blah, blah. and he's like hey you experienced the gorn and this young girl oriana experienced the gorn uh, uh, you could be the one to help her truly get past just surviving and start to live her life. If you can help her see the light. Meanwhile, in sickbay, Buckley is looking ill. He's breathing heavy. He's sweating a lot, profusely. Chapel notices that on his arms and on his neck, he's got weird blood blood veins or something. And so she's like, we should do another scan based on the scan we took from before because he's looking very different right now. And she asks Ensign Cadet, sorry, Chia, to help. Buckley begins to moan and writhe. Cadet Chia is underneath the bio bed for some reason. Oriana, seeing what's going on, knows what seems to know what's going on, runs and hides around the corner, covering her mouth on a different cot. Buckley shudders, screams, yells, blah, 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 blah. Hatchlings leap out of Buckley's body. One immediately jumps towards Cadet Chia and just severs her neck. She falls down dead. More hatchlings jump out of Buckley, four in total, but two of them attack each other and one of them gets killed by the other one. And as this happens, Nurse Chapel scene that jumps on the table and activates the containment shield. Meanwhile, Mbenga is treating Duke's wound elsewhere in the ship. And he's like, hey, all seems well. You didn't have that. And Duke's like, no, I almost won that. And Bang is like, hey, man, could have been much worse. We don't have to amputate. We just treated the wound. Everything's going to be fine. And Duke's like, yeah, you're right. I'm a lieutenant now. Everything's probably going to be sweet, super cool, pretty great once I get us all off this planet. And he's standing in front of a Jeffrey's tube. And two hatchlings run down the Jeffrey's tube and tear into Duke, uh, not killing him instantly, but slowly dragging him away, screaming. And Pike's like, oh, snap. We got to tell the rest of the crew immediately that everything has gone poorly. Meanwhile, back in sickbay, Chapel is whispering for Oriana. She deactivates the shield. She makes her way around the room. She doesn't see Oriana anywhere. She's startled by movement, only to find that it's Laan. The security chief walks in. She looks at the scene. She's like a like a grizzled veteran detective. She's just like, yeah. yep, there were four hatchlings here that came out of Buckley's body. One is dead. That leaves three. We got to get a move on. And Chapel's a pretty flustered but Lon hands her a phaser and says, watch your back, watch the ceilings and shoot anything that moves. I'm going to go try to find Oriana. Lon searches for Oriana, starting with where they originally found her, and they find her there. And Oriana's like, oh, you couldn't keep me safe. And Lon's like, hey, you were, but I see that you went to the coldest place on the ship because the Gorn hate cold. And Laon's like, I would have hidden in such a place myself. Oriana recalls how the, the crew of the Peregrine had tricked the Gorn into going outside, but then the, the Gorn were back now. So Laon assures Oriana, hey, listen, it's my job to keep people safe. And this crew can do anything, even defeat the Gorn. And she's like, hey, I may be parenting something a doctor told me 10 minutes ago, but they're surviving and then there's living. And, and you got to live. Okay? So follow me. 
Meanwhile, in engineering, Hemmer and Hura have completed the repairs. It's another a win for, a, what does she call it? Team Hemhora. Hemmer's like, hey, you do the honors. Uhura hits the button. She brings the power back up. But then an alarm sounds. They hear movement. Hemmer's uncertain what it is, but he smells blood, human blood. And sick bay. Quack is like, oh, the power's back. Hemmer must have made progress. And Kirk's like, oh, God, everything's happening here. We're going to end up being a lizard chow. And we got to make a run for the shuttles. And Spock's like, oh, no, that ice storm that I was talking about from before, it's happening probably right about now. And Kirk's like, yeah, you're not safe inside the ship, but you think it would be nice to die nice and warm. And Bang is like, I could sedate him. And Pike's like, hey, Kirk is stronger than he looks. He's just he's just dramatic. Uh, Spock is able to get the internal comms working and Pike sends a shipwide thing telling people everyone to, to regroup in sickbay as soon as possible. But meanwhile, in engineering, one of the Gorn hatchlings leaps through only to be killed and and eaten by a much big, big bigger one. Suddenly, huge, like large dog size. Mm-hmm. They were like went from tiny little they grow fast. canary size. They grow. Hey, fast. That was like five minutes. Anyway, that's what they do. They're gone, baby. They're gone. Solid gone. Uhura is like, we got to make a run for it. But Hammer senses, he's like, knows that the Gorn is going to go for Uhura. So he pushes her out of the way. It spits on her and he takes the brunt of it. And it's like some kind of acid spit or something. He's like, ah! But then just as the Gorn is about to attack and take them down, a phaser shot from causes the Gorn to retreat. Whew. Man, I'm getting sweaty just remembering this episode. Okay, Vanga back. They they all get back to sickbay, right? They're like, okay. And Vanga's like, hey, I looked at the the the, the like post mortem on the one Gorn that we found here, and the genetic makes makeup makes them invisible to our sensors. And the Spock is like, oh, the ducks in the Gorn's mouth are probably for expelling some sort of venom. And Hen- and Hemmer enters at that point. He's like, hell yeah, and it hurts. And Spock's like, oh, it's probably a method to blind their prey. Something that makes the Hammer go like, not the best target, Pike ask Hammer about telepathy, if that could help them try to find them, and Hammer's like, no, they have some sort of psychic barrier, and Spock is like, man, that's pretty impressive. They have just evolved to have all this in their genetic coding, making them impossible to track, easier to be prey, which causes Kirk to be upset, and he calls Spike, Spock a pointy-eared computer, and there's a little bit of a fight, and then Pike is like, hey, stop arguing. We need to focus on the mission. And Hammer says, hey, we fixed almost everything except for navigation, and so our, we're basically done here. And so Pike's like, all we got to do is deal with the Gordon, and then we can get out of here. He asks La'an what she wants to do. She's like, the hatchlings have the hatchlings have begun molting. They're not yet fully mature. There's two left, and they're gonna. Those are gonna be the smartest and strongest ones, and they're gonna be angry at each other. And she's like, we got to kill them now because we don't have a chance against. All of us don't even have a single chance against a single adult. So Pike's like, well, we can work together. That's our advantage. The fact that these two Gorn are going to hate each other is a disadvantage for them. Pike Mangum points out that the younglings were too fast to hump, so they need to make like a choke point, a thermopylae, if you will, a hot gates, a 300 situation. And uh, La'an says they're super smart, so just like a, a normal trap is not going to fool them. They're not just like lizards. La'an says, so they have aggressive behavior, so we can use ourselves as bait, and also they avoid the cold, so they can use the cold to, to herd the Gorn into particular places. Pike approves the plan, and the crew gets to work. Pike and Mbanga go to the uh, bridge, and the, they with Oriana and they put Oriana in the captain's chair and Pike uses his command codes, which are the same as he always had apparently to quarterback the mission from the bridge. The temperature begins to decrease except for a a warm area in one of the cargo bays where Spock and Hammer are waiting. And at that point, Spock asks Hammer if he's okay to do what he must do. And Hammer is like, I will do what I must. Don't you worry about me. Uhura in one of the corridors reports that one of the Gorns has spotted her. She shoots and attracts a spot, a shot. It attracts its attention. She breaks into a run. Pike is monitoring the progress. He's blasting cold air into the transporter room just as Kirk seals the door. And Kirk rem- says, like, hey, Uhura, you really are good at everything. Detects that it went to the vent system and warns Spock, who has that done fork. I don't know what to call it. And Spock uses a bunch of bursts. It, like, shoots. It doesn't just stun if you hit. It like shoots, which is cool. Pew, pew. And uh, he uses that to try and get the attention, but the 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 Gorn is not interested in that. And La'an is like, you have to make it angry. You must fight it, Spock. So Spock's like, oh, okay, cool. I'll just uh, let the rage that's always in my thoughts into my heart, and everything will be... Rah! He screams. He runs down the corridor. He's 
banging things with the thing. He's blinded by rage. And then suddenly Pike realizes there's two Gorn uh, and they're trying to box Spock in. And so Spock is pulled in to a door and, and Kirk grabs him by the collar to, to get him. And he, uh, but he returns to a sort of calm, but he looks a little bit, uh, a little bit rattled. They're trapped and the two, the two Gorn are trapped and they're beginning to turn on each other. And so they're fighting. And Lon's like, okay, they're going to fight now. And whoever wins will be the smartest, strongest one, the Alpha. And once it's dead, then we can all go home. But she tells Hammer, it's coming your way. Oh, no, she's coming his way. And then she steps into its way. Uh, she gets out there and she's talking to him. She's like, come on, you want to fight me? And she throws her phaser down. She's shouting the challenge, just saying she's unarmed. And she's like, come on and fight. And then the Gorn looks up and he starts to charge her. And it's about the size of like a small dog. And Lon breaks into an all-out run toward the cargo bay. So, uh, Hammer puts himself in a thing with the window closed thing and Lon runs she gets into the cargo bay that's like the warm place in the ship and jumps into I guess that they're po- I don't know what they are cargo par- pods it's a weird shaped cargo area and she pulls the door closed behind her and the uh, Goran jumps on top and it starts to almost break the composite glass and she shouts at Hammer do the thing and then Hammer activates some sort of thing and they blast the Gorn with more super cold air <sighs> oh boy it's still screaming and scratching as this is happening. Anyway, Lan emerges from the pod. She finds the Gorn frozen, and she's like, oh, God, what's happening? The Gorn is frozen solid and picks up a bar, and she smashes the Gorn, killing it. And then the crew is like, oh, everything, we did it great. Hooray! But then Hammer emerges from the pod looking pretty sick, and Lan realizes, oh, not all the Gorn are gone. Because Hammer, when he got spit on, got infected with eggs, and so he's like, I have locked everyone out of engineering, and I'm going to walk out into the cold and protect all of you by letting myself die. And Uhura's like, no, behind the door, and they try to override it. And Spock is upset, but they can't do anything about it. And La'an watches him go, and he walks outside into the cold air. It glistens and blows on his face, and he's like, ah, oh, God, feels good, just like Andoria. And then he falls off the mountain into the chasm below. Whew. He says, yeah, oh, he gives one last little piece of advice to Uhura. He's like, hey, open yourself up. Make friends. You're going to love it. Later on, the Enterprise leaves. They've come back from their mission. They've got the Peregrine in tow. And there's a memorial service for the three lost crew people, Chia, Dookie Duke, and Hammer. And everyone is talking about how they feel. Ortegas makes some truly wonderful comments, as does Uhura about the last thing that she learned but we see also that Chapel's looking at Spock and Spock is looking angry and he's fist in his head and he leaves abruptly and Chapel follows and Spock punches one of the corridor relays and he's like oh, I let something in and I can't control my anger you shouldn't do it and Chapel's like no it's fine you're just feeling upset and he's like it's making me weak and she's like no it makes you human and she hugs him they look into each other's eyes deeply and then without a word Spock walks away finally in Pike's quarters, Laon reports that, hey, I found Oriana's family, I think. I don't know. They live outside of Federation space, but I need to get her to them, and I am requesting a leave of absence. And he's like, no, even if I said no, I bet you'd go. She's like, you're right. But as she leaves, she says, thank you for everything, Captain. No, Chris. And then the final scene is Uhura, having made up her mind perhaps to stay, walking onto the bridge and looking at the communications station. And here endeth my rundown. Of season one, episode nine. Woo. All those who wander. What an episode. Let's chat about that. I say, darling, let's do a quick chat about that. Yes, 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 yes let's do. Yes, indeed. What an episode. There's a lot to talk about. Poor Hemmer. I was so devastated that he left or was killed off. I think I, I think I've been watching too many TV shows because. I now know when someone's going to die at the end of an episode based on how they act in the middle of the episode. And as soon as he was like, yes, the people you're going to love, the people love it, the people and stuff. I was like, this guy's dead. He's dead. Yes, but we didn't know that at the beginning of the season. We didn't know it a few episodes ago. Last, As of last episode, Hemmer was becoming quite the favorite. Well, that's true. He didn't even show up till episode two. He's been on, on, <laughs> on and off. These are only 10 episode seasons. Listen, they're making crazy moves. What can I say? It seems shocking to me. But I also, having thought about it, maybe they're making room for Dr. Sanchez or these other people they keep mentioning. I don't know. seems like there's an arc in the offing 
that they're trying to mm. get at. They're getting rid of La'an, which seems like a mistake, but whatever. And Hammer. I don't know. I guess we're going to have a new engineer. Do we think Mr. Mr. Kirk might step up? Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to feel good about that. We do know that James Kirk is joining the, uh, the cast. Obviously, I don't think he'll be engineering, but... He's, is he as a regular? Yeah. They've cast Paul Wesley as James Kirk. They've even released a photo. Anyway, we're, we're ruining all my my news. Oh, well, it's you. You're the one mentioning it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the... I think it's cool. Yeah, obviously we still haven't seen a full grown Gorn, so they're really they're really trying to stretch out this Gorn scary stuff. But I can't imagine they go into the full Gorn fighting a full Gorn without Lon. So maybe season two Lon comes back. She's she like, has the Gorn to. are right behind me. <laughs> they can't get rid of her for the whole Noonian Singh thing either. We haven't explored yeah. that. We have no idea what's going on with that. I can't imagine Lon won't come back. Maybe there'll just be a gap between seasons where everyone right. goes off and does a bit of their thing. And Lan comes back, a changed person. All right. Well, we'll see. Mm. I don't know. But yeah, we only have one episode left, so I'm wondering what that one episode is going to be. It's just like they go home and Ahura's like, I'm, I've decided I'm going to work. Uh, and yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. I didn't look up the name of the last episode of the season, so I don't know what it's called. But I bet it's Latin for something weird. And let's see. Otherwise, yeah. Uh, a quality of mercy, so nothing Latin. The quality of mercy. I bet they kicked around some Latin, though. They were probably like, qualitio et merci. Discovery did a lot of Latin. I don't think Susan, uh, Strange New Worlds has done all that much Latin. No, but usually Discovery has done Latin, and so has Picard. Usually, like, the end True. of a yes. season is a Latin... Et in our, you know oh, I, mean? I take it back. There was Memento Mori. Memento Mori. Oh, they did do that. You're right. Well, there you go. Those nerds. One. Stupid nerd. Okay. Well, I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna have much more to talk about, I guess, when the season is wrapped and we know what what the they're gonna there's gonna be loose hanging threads. Some with Chapel and Spock probably, and to Pring will he will he break up he with to Pring? Up with the Pring, they're totally into each other. Yes, Why we not? know that eventually, but it's not gonna be. You think it's gonna be this soon? Just they've been together for what a year or something. Oh, too know. too quick. Move slow, Spock. Well, I guess maybe if his passions are all out of whack, he might do something stupid. We'll see. An emotional oh, Spock. Quotable moments? Oh, I have but one quotable moment. Well, let's do it. Quotable moments! It is Hemmer, of course. The moment that I knew he was going to die. But he's working with, with Hura on the thing, and he says... It is better to be the one left behind, be the one leaving than the one left behind. But that is wrong. You create bonds. It is a gift. Of course, the people you care about are going to cause you pain. It will hurt, but the love it yields will far outweigh the sorrow. Ah, yes. Oh, wait, shall we? Do you want to, to say a farewell to Hema? I was thinking we'd do that after the news. Are you doing news? We have news. Let's we must do, do news. news. Love a bit of news. Bruce Horak knew his death was imminent from his Zoom audition with showrunner Henry Alonzo Myers. But did you know? Fun fact, Celia Rose Gooding didn't know until the script was sent out for episode nine that Hemmer was going. Shock oh, horror. No. Bruce Horak only asked of the writers make it a cool death in a recent interview, obviously, with Will Wheaton on after uh, no it's not after track it's, it's ready room it used yeah. to be after track anyway strange new worlds season two has just wrapped production in toronto producer toronto. director chris fisher confirming in a tweet on july 1st this is how current we are aki we are so current also we we do know i think from april uh, when a when a, uh, a teaser photo was released that paul wesley from vampire diaries will be playing james kirk in the new season so we shall see we shall see i wonder how if, if if what do you call it Batons will be set up to be passed between Pike and Kirk. Who knows? Mike McMahon has been speaking about season three of Lower Decks, and we have he has confirmed that the beloved Peanut Hamper, our favourite exocomp, will be returning in mm -hmm. season three. And uh, Mike McMahon also indicating that more Trek aliens will be fleshed out in upcoming seasons. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Star Trek Mission Chicago in April also teased a role-playing game with the Lower Deckers, where the Lower Deck, where the Lower. Where the yeah, Lower Deckers? Yeah, welcome to my be, hell. 
<laughs> which the lower deck, oh, fuck, which the lower deckers will be getting into. And our dear, dear Tony Newsom in a recent interview with Slash Film confirmed we'll finally see what's happening with Carol Freeman. And best guess is we are looking at an August drop date, which was when previous seasons have been scheduled for their debut. Wow. Finally, don't forget that Fathom Events are doing screenings of The Wrath of Khan on the big screen and you can go to fathomevents.com to find a local screening that's happening, I believe, September 4th. And you're and going, all. are you not? I am. Yes, are you not I going? going? You are going, I'll be honest. I am going. I know. So sorry for you. Wow. Well, but, yeah. Well, anyway. <clears throat> that's mm-hmm. all from the news. love my new segments yes and now before we go away i think it's time for a somber moment of reflection we shall tribute i'm gonna get real close to the mic for this and say hammer you showed up inexplicably at the end of episode one and i did not know who you were supposed to be but then you worked your way into our hearts by catching a carrot or something over your shoulder that time and making fun of people for being weird about your telepathic kikipis and you tutored Uhura and you're a part of her life for that Himmer we will never forget that you had faith of the heart baby Lieutenant Hemma. Lieutenant Hemma. Oh, next time. Next time. time. Hemma. Next time. Reporting for duty next, next time. time. On set phasers. Next time on set phasers, we'll be talking about the season finale of uh, of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. It's Strange New Worlds. That's that's what Yeah, I'm season finale. <laughs> yes, that's yes. That's how yes. you pronounce it. I thought you forgot that I, I, for a moment I thought you forgot which season we were oh recapping. season yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just bubbled through season oh, one three the season <laughs> finale of the Star Trek Strange New Worlds episode 10 entitled something about mercy I forgot there's something about mercy is it Ben Stiller a quality the quality of mercy. of mercy not there's something about mercy great sequel could be written that way anyway if you like what you hear and you've enjoyed this trip with us watching uh, this first season of Strange New Worlds you can you can follow us wherever you get your podcast from we're on all the platforms and we would love it if you listen to all the back episodes we have about star trek discovery star trek picard and just star trek lower deck we've covered all the seasons that there are to be covered and we will soon have covered yet a fourth franchise of star trek so please please become a a set phaser oh we don't have a name for our fans yes uh, I don't know. Set phasers, stunners. Hmm. Set, S- stunners. Uh, but you can do that by... St- <laughs> what up, stunners? <laughs> yeah. Stunners. Uh, you can become a fan and a patron of ours by going to p- p- patreon.com forward slash set phasers. You can, of course, also follow us on the old Instagram and Facebook. We are even on YouTube, of course, if you want to watch the video episodes after the fact. Uh, we are youtube.com. I don't know what our page I is. I forgot that we were putting so the podcast. videos are up on YouTube. People, listen to that. Yeah, they go up there. Yeah. You can, you can see Aki dance if you really gotta, want to, but you have to wait please. until the episodes are published. You don't get to see them unless you are a patron. patron. You can see them once they are published, but not before. That's for patron-only people. Our wonderful patrons, we, we like to thank them. Thank you so much to our dear patrons. We we adore you, and we can't wait to see you at the end of July when we have a Zoom hang. Indeed. Oh, sorry. Okay. I was writing down that we have YouTube to the my preamble, and I can do that later. Listen, follow oh. us on social <laughs> media, baby. Facebook, Instagram, Set Facebook, Podcast, Meme Game Strong. It's all Stevie occasionally. I make comments, but uh, usually I I hint at them from the dark. I think, I think that's it. Yeah. Well, until next time, I'm Stevie Manns. <laughs> Oh boy, <clears throat> and and I'm I'm sad about Hammer. I I don't have a clever thing. I'm just sad that he's gone. But this has been Set Phasers, a highly illogical Star Trek podcast. Computer and program. Mm-hmm.